Morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard. J.D. Hall, not Greer, has disqualified himself from the pastorate and many other things. We're going to be talking about it coming up next. All right. Welcome to the show, everybody. Thank you for joining me. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, lots of new subscriptioners. My, my word, I call um, just briefly about me, I am a pastor of a small church here in Kentucky and uh, Baptist Church, Southern Baptist Church, technically. I know some people have a problem with that, but we're in it for the fight for the moment. I'm married and I've uh, been married since 2007, I've got four children, and the Lord's been good to us. Life's been hard, but he is good. I often remember that Jesus said that we would have tribulation and trial in this world, but he has overcome the world. Uh, we're talking about J.D. Hall. You might know him better as the author of Pulpit and Pen, or now what it's called, Protestia, uh, a discernment blog. And a discernment blog that has caused a lot of consternation and feathers ruffled. Now, sometimes you can be a little too cantankerous and too, a little too much in the weeds, but at the end of the day, that's what we're called to do. And I know most people don't like that, but it's what it is. So these two sites, I think he had another one, the Polemics Report as well. I don't know if they were all the exact same or what. I've not followed it too terribly closely over the years, although I have written, rather read, a number of things from him and others like him. But he seeks to call out Christians for their folly, right? False teaching, false doctrine, heresy, and so on. Many Christians don't like this, though. They don't like the blogs and the sites and the channels and um, but we're all ultimately called, <clears throat> even if you don't have a channel or a Twitter uh, handle or Instagram or anything like that, we're called to rightly divide the truth, even if we're not a pastor, right? We're called to live and walk in holiness. We're called to reject sin and, and kill our flesh, uh, kill our sin and so on. And so there's differing levels, I understand. And sometimes it's just tone and we have such tone and there's others, A.D. Robles and John Harris and guys like that that do similar things even more than I do. And yet they often will get, wow, it's the tone. Well, it's just people, uh, people got to be a little nicer, a little light, just a hug, you hug and just love like Jesus love. Well, we're going to look about what and how Jesus love. But before we get too far, we're going to be talking um, about a video from Justin Peters, uh, Phil Johnson and Chris Roseborough. Now it's on Chris Roseborough's channel. It was a clip from Dr. On Watchdog. So Full uh, disclosure, I've not watched the whole video on Chris Roseborough's channel. Uh, it's just a clip from Doctrinal Watchdog. Now, again, I would differ with these guys, but we're all in the same camp. And especially these days, even if you're not a Calvinist or you are a Calvinist or you're this or that or Young Earth or Cessationist or whatever, we really need to lock arms with each other. If you love Christ, if you uphold his word and, and you want biblical fidelity. You know that men are pastors. You know that women have babies. You want to have a, a Christ reigning and ruling because you know that he is ultimately king. I know there's some differences. There's a lot of differences. And if we were all talk and answer a thousand questions or even a hundred questions, you watching wouldn't answer a hundred the same way I would. Doesn't mean we don't know, love Christ. I mean, there was plenty of problems and issues in the early church, not just in Acts, but you know, the centuries after. We need to lock arms with each other. We really do. Uh, because what we don't want to do, at least what I don't want to see happen, is sequester so close down. This is what a lot of churches do and a lot of pastors do, especially Baptists for some reason. I guess we're so independent and um, autonomous. But we, well, I don't want to lock arms with anybody. And then there's this guilt by association. We don't need to do that. So I agree with Justin Peters and Phil Johnson and Chris Roseborough on a number of things, on a number of things. I disagree with them on other things, but I want to make everything crystal. OK, so that's where I'm coming from. The New Testament and the Old Testament is filled with much discernment, uh, calling out false teachers and false doctrine and so on. Heretical teaching, seeking to show Christians the true path. After all, we're called followers of the way, which implies there's a wrong way. We see this here in Jude. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you appealing that you contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Colossians 4.14, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. 
Greet the brethren who are in Laodicea and Emphas and the church that is in his house. Excellent. But we then sadly see 2 Timothy 4.10, for Demas, in love with this present world, that's age, not cosmos, but aeon, age there, this present current system, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. What does this mean? Well, this means that Demas was with Paul and now he's not, and he calls him out. Uh, he also, Jude is calling out the false teachers as well. I was wanting to write to you about our common salvation, but I felt it necessary to write to you about this. And he calls, talks about false teachers. So this is something that is clear from the scripture. 1 Timothy 1.18, I charge and entrust you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made to you, that by them you may wage a good warfare. Listen to that, a good warfare, <clears throat> church. It's not just a matter of, oh, you know, Jesus' teachings or this or that or whatever. Oh, Jesus is this dead carpenter guy and, you know, we, we worship a dead guy. No, we're in a war, right? It's not this nam namby-pamby sort of wimpy such thing. We're in a war, folks. And even the most conservative, fundamentalist type of Christians in the last century or so have really, really ignored this. Holding faith. And good conscience, by rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith, among whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I've handed over to Satan, so that they will learn not to blaspheme. Hymenaeus and Alexander, he called these guys out. Now, this doesn't bother anybody today, because Hymenaeus and Alexander aren't living today. But if he said Russell Moore and Beth Moore, right, they're not married. Uh, or if he said Kenneth Copeland and Benny Hinn, most people would, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, but if he said... Adam Greenway and Danny Aiken or Al Mohler and Danny Aiken or, you know, and we, well, now we start to, Oh, ah, and we know these guys, right? We know these people, we know these men and women who are teaching false doctrine or at minimum they're talking about, it, or they're being accused of it. Not to say every single person I just named is, you know, an outright terrible heretic that's going to hell, but there is false teaching. False teaching does happen. Jesus in 23, spoke to the crowds and his disciples, saying that the scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in the chair of Moses. Implied, they shouldn't have done that. They don't have the right to do that. Verse 3, therefore, all that they tell you, do not do and observe, but do not do according to their deeds. For they say things and do not do them. They tie up heavy burdens and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are unwilling to move them with so much as a finger, but they do all their deeds to be noticed by men. And then 13, he drops down. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, because he puts in the woes. Jesus gives the woes. And it's not the woe of Keanu Reeves. You know, the cool guy, woe, well, <laughs> a condemnation, right? We see this in Galatians, Paul's writing as well. We won't look at it just for time because there's so many. But Jesus here, he's talking about the scribes and the Pharisees. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe to you, hypocrites. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, because you shut up the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, excuse me, from people. For you do not enter yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you travel around on sea and land and make a proselyte, one proselyte. And when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. Oh, and if we're not to go too far, we'll skip down to 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Here's one of the eight, as we've already seen. You tithe mint and dill and cumin. You know, you get the little spice cabinet, right? And have neglected the weightier provisions of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. But these are the things you should have done without neglecting the others. You blind guide, you strain out the gnat and swallow the camel. Strain out the gnat, swallow the camel. What is going on here? Well, Jesus is calling out these Pharisees, these hypocrites, these guys who know the law, but in the law, they think they have eternal life. In the law, right? In the pages of it, not in the God behind the law. 
you are neglecting the weightier matters, right? And we see this too. Oftentimes, we even see this with missions and evangelism, and yet we neglect the weightier matters. Yes, we want to see the nations come to Christ. Yes, we want to see our neighbor and those people in Mongolia or Sub-Saharan Africa or China or wherever come to Christ. But we neglect our children. We neglect our wives. We neglect our husbands. That's too easy. Well, they'll just get it by osmosis. No, probably not. Probably not. That's nah, possible. Right? It's all. It's always possible, but likelihood is probably not. So we're to love like Jesus, aren't we? Right? Love like Jesus. Just love like Jesus. There's a church near me. I think they're fairly liberal. Uh, love like Jesus always. And it's like, well, what happens when you don't love like Jesus always? Then what happens? Well, call out false teaching. Is this not what we're supposed to do? And love like Jesus? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So we certainly do not need to be exactly this way, right? Every single person. I'm not telling every single Christian to do this and call out false teachers all the time and everything else. It's it's not what we're called to do. We are called to some of the head, some of the mouth, some of the eyes, some of the feet, some of the hands, the legs, and so on. But J.D. JD Hall has sought to do this for years, right? And this is something that most people have had a problem with one time or another, even the most conservative and Bible-believing among us. But hear me closely, hear me closely, because I want to be certain uh, and be clear that there are times that he's gone too far in the weeds, seeking a demon under every pebble and false doctrine in every dark closet. I don't think we need to do that. I certainly would disagree with some of the articles. But there's truth, right? There's still truth out there in many respects as well. So I do not condone everything that he or Protestia Pulpit and Pen has written. He was a pastor or is a pastor, was a pastor in Montana. Uh, and one of the goals, main functions of a pastor is to protect the flock just as a shepherd protects the sheep, actual shepherd, actual sheep from wolves and thieves. But he's been removed from his church. Now, I don't know all the inner workings, but it sounds like that made sense. That makes sense to, to be removed, but he actually submitted to it. So we can look at an article here and find that so here it is, J.D. Hall, Pulpit and Pen founder, disqualified. Now, you know, they pull a very unflattering picture. That's pretty standard, right? It's a v- Facebook video grab. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> you know, whatever. <laughs> People do that. That's that's just what they do. I try not to do that with my thumbnails personally. I want to present people in the best light, not the worst light. I feel like that's disingenuous. It says here right below, where'd it go? In the past, Hall's Church, a fundamentalist congregation that opposes critical race theory that has stood behind its controversial pastor. So notice right there, it says what? A fundamentalist pastor that opposes critical race theory, right? As if the standard is now critical race theory, and if they oppose it, well, there must be a bunch of idiots and bigots, right? The further, as it goes, he's no longer listed as pastor. Sydney, Montana, been removed off the staff protesty website, originally known as Pulpit and Pen. Looking further down, the second, uh, third, fifth, and sixth paragraph, Hall's resignation is the latest bad news for Montana pastor and blogger. In February, Hall filed bankruptcy after being sued for libel for a story Montana Gazette had run about Adrian Jawart, a Native American activist. Then in mid-May, he was arrested for driving under the influence and carrying concealed weapon while intoxicated. Now, I can't imagine having concealed weapon. Is that really illegal in Montana? It's not illegal here in Kentucky and most other constitutional carry states. Maybe it is. I kind of doubt it. But anyway, so Hall was settled, later settled with Jawart reacting. So there's a story. He said he fabricated it. So he's lying, right? So he's lying. Um, and under a lot of stress, again, I'm not making any uh, excuses for JD Hall, uh, whatsoever. We are all sinners. We're all broken. We're all messed up. Um, and sometimes we make stupid decisions, but he's submitted to this. He's not made excuses. Unlike most people, uh, even most big Eva guys and, oh, we're not really teaching critical race theory. We're not really doing this. There's no leftward drift. There's no, well, women, pastors, all the office, the function, blah, blah, blah. All this nonsense that we see so often. And when they're caught red handed, they are like children and deny it. This is sad. And you know who I'm talking about. The eighth paragraph down here in the past, Hall's congregation. See, notice it says Hall's congregation. 
It's not really. I mean, I pastor a church. It's not my church, right? And to be clear, that's where a lot of people, we need to be um, exacting with our words, especially in our current moment. I do YouTube videos. I, I'm not a YouTuber. I am pastoring a church. I don't even like the term pastor. I mean, I like the term pastor, don't get me wrong. But even as a graphic designer, doing graphic design, that's my background, versus being a graphic designer. Because ultimately, you're a slave of Christ. You're either in Christ or you're not. And this goes with just kind of your identity and who you are. Uh, but we find our identity in so many other things versus Christ. Those are a little... Little nitpicky things, but it's not Hall's congregation is my point. It's not my congregation, New Harvest Baptist Church here in Kentucky. It's it's I pastor this church. I lead this church, but it's not my church. It's Christ's church. It's his church. Self-described fundamentalist, six-day creationist. Love how they just stick that in an independent Baptist church, right? They got that little extra thing, a little between the dashes. Has stood by its pastor despite its legal problems. Trials and persecution from liberal activists. Now, no, no doubt that they've had many liberal activists that have attacked Protestia, attacked their church, attacked J.D. Hall, Hall, and so on and so forth. We rejoice in our pastor's persecution for the suffering for the sake of the Lord Jesus or Lord Christ, whatever. And we are a congregation that stands behind him 100%. Okay. Now, that's all great and good and fine um, if it's real persecution. However... It says after Hall's arrest and church, the church also issued a statement of support claiming Hall had suffered from a vitamin deficiency that caused a poor condition slurred speech with word displacement. Now I'm having some word displacement right now and slurred speech probably because I'm a little thirsty. But that's just making excuses right there. That's just making excuses. Uh, he was on Xanax and he's been addicted to Xanax for a while. Oh, he's got a vitamin deficiency. Really, guys? No, no, um, sorry. And this is where if we put somebody on a pedestal too high, our pastor, theologian, an author, whatever, a YouTuber, we're all sinners, right? We all still stumble and sin. Don't lie. Like, don't lie. Oh, yeah, I mean, he might have a vitamin deficiency, but that's not why he has slurred speech. Sorry. Likely. That's not. It's because he was either drunk or high from too much Xanax, which we've seen and we'll see here in a moment. Verse 14, verse 14, <laughs> paragraph 14, rather, sorry. Hall is best known for his role as pulpit and pen, where it's criticized and saw as a liberal drift, where he criticized and what he saw was a liberal drift from worldly influences. Well, it's not just what he saw, but what is compared to scripture, right? He quotes Beth Moore, or he cites Beth Moore, Southern Baptist ethicist, Russell Moore, Karen Swallow Pryor, J.D. Greer, Tennessee preacher, and Trump supporter. I love it. I like, guess if all these other people don't support Trump, or they do, or like, but you got to point out this guy, Greg Locke, because he supports Trump. Again, thank you, religious religion news services. Like, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I mean, they just point out silliness. It's, yeah. Anyway, kind of annoying, but it is what it is, as they say. Did he was addicted to Xanax. And this is a drug that's very addictive. Uh, and if he had pain or, or other things, he had a surgery, you get this. and you know. But it's, it's very addictive. Now, I'm not making excuses for him at all. Hear me closely. I'm not. But at the same time, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, should he have been removed? Yeah, likely so. Does this mean he can never be a pastor again, as some people say? We'll see here in a moment. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But false teaching abounds everywhere in the church. So-called pastors and prophets and apostles, they scamper around America and our TVs and phones like ants at a picnic, speaking often the most outlandish nonsense that one can imagine. It's true, right? We all see it. We all know it. And yet so often we just forget about it. And yet... Tim Chalice here in an article a few years ago in 2017, he says it's a good time to be a false teacher, to espouse deadly doctrine. It seems that today's brazen heretic will be granted a hearing and in all likelihood a book deal. Novelty is appealing. Orthodoxy is boring. And that's the key, isn't it? Orthodoxy is boring. 
I don't want boring orthodoxy, but this is just like with children, right? Oh, I don't want to do that. I'm bored. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to. I didn't ask if you wanted to, right? Drop a comment, by the way, if you have kids and you struggle with this chores, picking up things, uh, or if you're a manager of some kind, I didn't ask if you wanted to do that. I, I need you to do that, right? I want you to do it. It doesn't matter what you want. Right. Oh, I'm bored. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, that's that's lame. That's that's simple. That's basic. Well, often the mundane, which is also the mundum, the world of the mundaneness, which we're also where we get that word. A lot of life is boring. What we're so like sizzling and we think, oh, I'm bored with my spouse. I'll get a divorce. I'm bored with this. I'll do this. I'll use pornography. I'll lie. I'll cheat. I'll get a different job. I'll do this different thing. I'll move. I'll do whatever. And, and I'll get different friends and I'll try this other thing. And Maybe, you know, it doesn't say we shouldn't move and do things and that and change jobs and have more children or get a different house or remodel. But what it does mean is we, so much of life is boring, but people don't like that, do they? I want something appealing. I want something novel, AKA new. We could hone in and I've done that many other times on this channel. And if you've been around a while, you can see that. But I've looked at a lot of SBC and other big EVA nonsense, but I'm not looking at the leftward drift here on the SBC and the PCA and other establishment churches. Uh, the false teaching does abound, though. I mean, just look at woke preacher clips online on YouTube, Twitter, and so on. J.D. Hall, a very famous discernment fellow, uh, the author of Pulpit and Pen and then the Polemics Report and uh, and then the Protestia website, the, the guy behind that. Uh, he has been removed from the pastoral office and uh, and for grounds. Uh, and his church has revealed that he was removed for a, uh, a pretty severe drug addiction. So, uh, Justin, uh, let me ask you a question. You know, if restoration is always the goal, then when we practice discipline, we I think we need to make a distinction here that uh, when a pastor falls into gross and really over-the-top sins, uh, we're not talking then about that pastor being restored to the biblical office uh, you know, of pastor, are we? No, no, Chris, we're not. The, um, the, the pastor elders are held to a, a higher standard, and, and it is not to say that a pastor cannot be restored to fellowship with a local body of believers, which if they repent, they certainly can be. But as far as getting back into that office and being behind the pulpit, um, no, that is um, in, in our theological circles, that is not something that would be in view here. If you disqualify yourself in egregious, clear, egregious sin uh, as a pastor, then that is an office that you'll, you'll never hold again or should never hold again. Right. Very clear saying that. Now they have first Timothy three up and we won't look at it just for time. Uh, but that's the, the, Elder, you know, be above reproach, husband and one wife, being able to teach children that, you know, under control and so on. But it doesn't say anything about if you've fallen into sin, right? It doesn't say that you can't be restored to the pastorate. Now, again, I'm not fully saying, oh, you guys are wrong. Sorry, Justin Peters, you're wrong. I did disagree with him with um, the Babylon B thing from Elon Musk a few months ago. Um, and this is what we want. I get to push back against Justin Peters. And likewise, he would get to push back against me. This is called sharpening each other. We're not just sitting in our own bubbles. And like, How dare you disagree with John MacArthur? How dare you disagree with Al Mohler? How dare you disagree with Harsey Sproul or, or, or whatever, right? Well, but what do we need to do? I have my perspective. You have yours. Doesn't mean mine's better or something uh, because it's my perspective. But I have that perspective nonetheless. And we look at scripture and try and understand it. But you know, a drug use that's not even in view in the scripture. Now, was drugs available? Yeah, they were. Strong drink, obviously drunkard, uh, must not be a drunkard, it says. But does that mean permanent now you're done? Um, I don't know. I mean, drop a comment. Tell me, is this too far? Am I being too wishy-washy? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not addicted to Xanax, so I'm not trying or any drug for that matter, except for Jesus. You want to get high on Jesus? They used to do that in the 70s. It's so corny and stupid. Don't do that. Don't do that when you're witnessing. Um, but no, I'm not trying to make excuses because I'm not doing these things. Sometimes people will do that, like, you know, softening pornography or homosexuality because, you know, they're practicing these things. But he says in our circles, well, do you have a Bible verse, though? I mean, they have First Timothy 3 up, but like that doesn't say anything about being restored or not restored. That's just the qualifications for that. Now, if he's he shouldn't remain in this position for sure. Um, but, you know, and he's talking about the circle of non-denominational Bible only. Well, let's pull up the Bible then. Now, maybe they do. I 
doubt it though, because I doubt Dr. Watchdog would pull that up, but I don't know who that is. And, you know, he has po po he or she has posted a number of things before. But Peter, let's not forget, was guilty of attempted murder, right? Lying three times at the Last Supper before the crucifixion. He cursed Christ's name. He was rebuked by Paul, siding with the Judaizers, uh, called a hypocrite and so on. And yet J.D. Hall can't be restored because he got addicted to Xanax, a very common prescription drug. Now, maybe he has other problems. Maybe he's also a drunkard. Maybe he's also a philanderer. Maybe he's also other things. It doesn't say. And if it did say, I, I missed it. Um, but, you know, he's been harangued by both Christians and God haters alike for years and years. And, you know, that stress is going to get to you. It certainly is. Now, hear me clearly. Again, hear me clearly. I'm not promoting drug abuse or drug addiction or anything like that. And I'm not saying J.D. Greer shouldn't have. J.D. Greer. <laughs> Wish it was J.D. Greer. No, I'm just kidding. I, we shouldn't wish this on anybody, even our enemies, because it's always bad when someone falls, especially in the ministry, uh, even if they deserve it, so-called, quote unquote. I'm not making excuses. I'm not trying to do anything like that. What I am trying to do is push against both Peters and others who Phil Johnson was there. Uh, he's right hand man to MacArthur, basically. And, you know, he's nodding and, and, and so on. And so, again, these guys can have that opinion. I can have this opinion that I just I don't think I think that's too extreme. I just don't know where that says in Scripture. Unless I'm missing something, let me know. But it can never be restored. I just, uh, I don't know. Should he, though? That's the question. Should he? I don't know. I don't know. I, I've never met the guy. I've never even listened to one of his sermons. Um, yeah. Anyway, remember the Bible is polemical, right? Polemics report, all these things. People get annoyed about that. But we don't often see the forest from the trees. We're in the middle of the issue, the middle of the leftward drift that's currently happening in the SBC. There is a leftward drift. Um, there is a leftward drift in the PCA and other places as well. There is, there just is, but you can't often see it, right? We think about it and we think, well, I don't know. I, I, I would, I would, I see that now with Hymenaeus and Alexander. I see that with Demas. I see that with these other guys, Jesus rebuking the Pharisees. Yeah. Amen. And all these leftists would often say, yeah, amen. Probably even to Jesus's words. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can't have false teaching. Bad. That's bad. But here we can't see it when it's right in front of our face. Because oftentimes we don't know the scripture, number one, and we don't know how to apply the scripture, number two. And if we do know it, we don't know how to apply it. So the Bible's very polemical, especially in the New Testament authors. Um, James is writing, right? Of course, the whole letter of Jude is writing. Peter, uh, the epistles of John, uh, practically all of it. I mean, even within the Gospels, it's that way. I mean, Acts is probably the least polemical or maybe Revelation. Maybe. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful urge you to like and share and uh, drop a comment tell me as i've already said uh, and please sub if you haven't already uh, it does give me warm fuzzies all up inside of burning in my bosom as it were. so that's it helping you be against the world for the world that's my goal y'all have a good day and uh, see you later